uh, screw in the light botch. And he turns his arm over like this. And you see how that puts her leg here on my shoulder? Do I look even better? Oh yeah. That's hard to believe, but I believe you. <laughs> I want to start out by showing you guys kind of the 20% of the techniques that are going to yield the 80% of your results from this position. Uh, I should also start out by saying that this is all straight out of the Eddie Bravo playbook. So he's the best resource in the world on this stuff. So I owe a ton to Eddie Bravo and I owe pretty much all of this game here to Eddie Bravo. Now, having said that, the first technique that I'm gonna show you is the electric chair. And for me and the way that I do the lockdown, this is the real staple technique. So honestly, when I get to the lockdown, this is the technique that I'm going to hit probably 75% of the time. And so if you end up playing it the way that I do, that's probably going to be the case for you as well. So this can be a submission. A lot of people think of the electric chair as a submission, but I really don't treat it as a submission at all. I count the submission as a bonus. Like if they tap, awesome. But generally speaking, I'm going to get the sweep with this and then I'm going to pass. Or maybe I slide into the vaporizer uh, from the electric chair. But here's the way this is going to work. We're going to start with her in the underhook, and she's got a nice tight position here. I need to open her up. I need to, I need to get this underhook, but she won't give, it, give any ground at all. She won't even give ground here on the cross face, super tight. And so i got to open her up a little bit. That's all I need right there. If I can get that, then I can start to dig this thing apart. I'm going to take my hands, I'm going to roll them like this. And I'm gonna build a frame right there under her jaw. Well, it can be this way, it can be this way. Just whichever is more comfortable to you. Both work well. But I'm gonna now pull my knees to my face and then I'm gonna whip the legs this way. So we call this a whip down. When I do that, she has the base. <laughs> I have to punch her in the jaw sometimes too. Not always, but sometimes. So when she bases, I'm gonna suck this elbow to the inside and steal this space from her. But at the same time, I'm gonna steal the inside space behind me as well. So I'm gonna take this hand that was, look, the hands come off of frames, close elbow, not like this, close elbow here. And as this hand comes off of a frame, I drop it here in my back pocket. So I've got my hand on my hip and I'm under her leg. I've got the lockdown tight right now. Now I'm gonna bump my legs and I'm gonna to go to the other side. So look, I use my knees, I pull my knees to my face. That's how I move her. I don't struggle with her here and try to throw her to the other side. That's crazy. It's, I mean, even with the size difference here, it's not gonna work. So I move her by pulling my knees to my face. And now I've got the underhook on this side and I stretch and land on this hip. She's gonna be looking to cross face me. So if I open space here, yeah, go ahead. She's gonna, she's gonna start digging me out right there. That's no good. So I'm constantly thinking about moving her up with my knee, go back, with my knee and with my hands, I'm going this way, and I'm constantly thinking about closing myself into this space here so that she can't cross face me. So kind of go active with your cross face there. Go ahead. I'm gonna get down in here into this position, down low at the hip. Once I'm down here now, I'm gonna bump and I'm gonna stretch to here. I want this arm to go up just like this. That, I don't wanna fight her here, come on, come on over. I don't want to fight her with her leg here, like be strong with your leg, pushing back on me like this. So this is a technique that Elio Seneca showed me. It's awesome. And he's one of the best half guard players ever, by the way. But he takes this hand and he turns it over like this. He calls it the light bolt. He says, screw it in the light bulb. But actually he says, I screw in the light botch. And he turns his arm over like this. And you see how that puts her leg here on my shoulder? So now she's shelved into this position and she can't muscle her way back down anymore. This hand's gonna check the tricep over here on this side, you can do this one too, but this is just way easier to get. And now I'm gonna stretch my arm, stretch the legs and land on my side. So I'm gonna land over here. Nice tight lockdown, all right? I'm making pressure here, arm is still up. And if I feel like there's tension, I'll check the sub. So there's a couple of different submissions you can do here. First one's just the regular old electric chair. So I'm gonna check her here. If she doesn't tap, 
but she's still tight. I might think about coming up. So what? Watch. I post the hand, and then I push up to my elbow. But I'm keeping this pressure here, right? Even if I bring my hand back in, I don't bring my shoulder down. I'm always like this. Even if I'm bringing my hand in, my shoulder stays in position. Now, if I want to try the submission, I'm going to stretch her out, and I'm going to push away and go belly down as I put my grip together. Either an S is fine, a gable is fine, whatever works for you. But now I want to posture up and stretch her out as I go down. And I can feel with Nakaya, there's even she's tapping, but man, there's not that much tension in that. So she's super flexible, which is why we're using her so she doesn't get hurt. When I feel like some, it's just too much work over here, I'm going to look for the sweep. Well, you know what? I do want to show you guys one other submission right here, actually. So this is something that Josh McMurray, he may have been the first person I saw actually using it. He's one of my brown belts. But Chris Herzog's the first guy that we learned it from. It's a hip coil, one of just a few hip submissions that I know. So look, I'm going to bend her knee down and kind of crunch in so that I create a bend in her leg right there. You see that? And now I'm going to pull this towards me and turn my shoulder to the ground. And it makes like an Americana on her hip. It's like I'm doing this to her hip. Pretty cool. You can bend it here, here. Start to stretch it right there. Bam! It's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, Josh actually would hit that all the time. I'm going to move on to the sweep. So I stretch here, and I want to come up at this angle over here. I don't ever want to get caught holding her down like this so that she puts puts this position back in. So be strong right there. Yeah, like it's even it's super hard for me to wrangle her. So I keep her here on the shelf. Now I'm going to pop up. I'm coming up, 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 and moving to this angle here, keeping the lock down. I'm going to land over, and I would like it if I could get underneath this arm as well. Sometimes she may not give that to you, and you just take what you can get right here. I'm going to walk to the center with my knees. And now I'm going to take the inside leg out and move her knee across. I do that so that she can't recover her guard. Move her knee across, slide up into position and take that elbow. Now she can have her leg back. And a lot of times people will put their hand right here in the mix and I'll grab it just like that. And that's where I hit that big triangle. Boom, all the way up and over. Everybody understand? This is the fakest move in jiu-jitsu. I'm very happy to show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three.